Thanks, everyone. Um, first off, I am going to say, please hold claps till everyone's done, just so that we can get through faster. Um, so I'm Jake Novak. If you haven't met me, if I haven't met any of you yet, um, I'd be kind of surprised that some of you younger people I haven't been able to make very good connections with lately. Um, I'm going to be going to St. Louis. I'm going to be living in Creve Core area for now. I'm going to be working with a real estate development company called Subtext Living, and they do multifamily and student apartment complexes. I'm very excited to be working with them. Um, for my words of wisdom, I want to keep it kind of serious. Um, I want to bring up mental health. Mental health has been a crazy, just difficult issue to deal with lately in the world and at this school. Um, I just want to encourage you guys, whenever you're going through hard stuff, because there is going to be hard stuff that you're going to go through. If you haven't yet, be prepared. Um, but I want to encourage you, reach out to your friends. Um, there is always somebody that you can talk to about whatever you're going through, whether it's one of the ministers here or one of your close friends here or one of your close friends back home. There's always somebody that will listen and will be there with you. On the flip side of that, reach out to your friends and ask them how they are doing. Um, the winter season that we're in right now is one of the most like depressive seasons for people. So be there for your friends, be there for your family, do what you can. Um, and finally, we also offer free counseling on campus and there is a, um, a Christian pastor in town who works for them and you guys can go get counseling for free. I don't know why there's a negative stigma with counseling, but there shouldn't be. Utilize that seriously. It's professional counseling for free. Um, and he will also, of course, pray with you, I think. Just be like outside of his office, but either way, um, and also thank you to our ministers for also always providing in that area. Hello, my name's Mark Poindexter. Um, my plans after college are to pursue ministry, um, and so in the spring, I'll be at Mission Organization in Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, doing various ministry stuff and getting a lot of training experience and learning from great people. And in the summer, I'll be at a summer camp called Canica, which is, uh, I was there this last summer. It was a phenomenal experience and um, really kick-started this whole idea of, of uh, pursuing ministry. And I'll be on their leadership staff, which is going to be an awesome experience and I'll grow a lot. After that, we're going to see what the Lord um, directs me to. So wisdom um, is a great thing. So read Proverbs, that's one. Um, but I kind of also wanted to just be a little serious. Um, a big question I was thinking, okay, well, what question should people ask the Lord and get an answer from and be really serious about getting an answer from the Lord about? And the question that kind of went to my mind was, I think we should all ask God, you know, Lord, how do I love you? You know, what do you mean by love? scripture and being with other believers who can point you towards Christ. So that is a question you should ask yourself in a, in a big macro level, in a daily level, but even in like a small decision level. Like what decision right now is the one that shows that I love you, um, Lord? And that should be a serious relational process that goes in our lives every day um, is, Lord, how do I love you? And so that, that would be my wisdom for you guys is to pursue the answer to that question um, and be very serious about it. one is you get to this is the time that you can make mistakes and learn from them and for me I wanted to see if I was truly a leader or a follower and so just take the chance to join an organization and just start building up leadership you can figure out at some point if you don't actually want to be in a leadership position I ended up impulsively when I came here as a transfer student my junior year got involved with engineers without borders and forward now and I'm the president of the organization. So it just shows that you can slowly but surely get up there and prove to yourself if you are truly a leader in what kind of things that you need to work on to better yourself as a leader. 
outside more because I stayed and did all the homework all the time. And a lot of that's just coming from, from what they wish they would have done. And so my advice to you is to not get caught up in the idea that the best thing for you is what you wish you would have done. Or the best thing for you is what is right around the corner. Um, for a lot of people, that's either marriage or graduating or a job or whatever they think the best thing is for them at the next moment. And you really just forget that God has put you in a place where you are right now and he has you exactly where he wants you. So don't focus about what you think is best for you about this coming down the line. Be thankful for where you're at and enjoy it and embrace it. If life sucks, embrace it. If it's great, embrace it. But be thankful no matter what, and then eventually you'll find out that, hey, this is where I wanted to be five years ago, but I'm here now, and now I can actually enjoy it. So, oh, I guess I forgot I'm going to Albuquerque, too, because she took me, so... spots are taken um, super free so thank you later um, and also if you want to Venmo me for that piece of advice just let me know and I'll, I'll send that out in the CCF group chat so study hard, uh, but also play hard. Um, you're at this school to be a student. This is your vocation, so do your best to be a good student. So study when necessary, but also don't be afraid to do something fun, because uh, you only get to be a college student once. Take advantage of the community here that you have in CCF. 
you're gonna have hardships at this school, um, whether it be classes, friends, dating, careers, or anything else that life may throw at you. Um, the people in this community are always going to be here for you and will always love and support you and through everything and provide you a constant reminder that God is always there for you and always loves you. Uh, with that, invest in CCF during your time here in some way, shape, or form. Uh, participate in IMs, serve as an officer, serve as on a team like the worship team or the fellowship team. Be a part of a hangout group like the board game cr uh, club or the uh, movie club um, or mentor, even just mentor somebody. Whatever it is you're passionate about, get involved with it because being active in CCF goes a long way and it helps grow our community closer to each other as well as to God. Next, don't give up. Life is going to be tough, um, and school here is definitely tough. I think we all can agree on that. Um, and there's going to be times while you're here that it seems like giving up or quitting in one other, any aspect is the best option, um, but it isn't. Uh, you Things will get better, and you will get through it. I can promise you that. Um, next, don't be afraid to fail. I know at this school, there's a lot of pressure for us to all do really well, get good grades, and then additionally, there's also a lot of pressures to just be a good person um, and just be perfect in every other aspect of our lives. Uh, but you will most likely experience failure at some point in time, um, whether it be in school or the other areas in your life. Um, we all experience it. Um, I'm sure, I, I know I can attest to this, but I'm sure all the other grads here can attest to the fact that they've experienced some sort of failure. Um, but your failures do not define who you are as a person. Uh, they don't define who you are as a student, as a friend, as a boyfriend or girlfriend, as a son or daughter, as a brother or sister, or anything else. Um, but they can be a good growing opportunity for you, and they, you can use them to define who you will become in the future. Lastly, I want to remind everybody that God loves you, and that he's, he is always there for you, even when it doesn't feel like it. Uh, there may be many times in your life where it seems like God has abandoned you, and so you feel distant from him, or you may even distance yourself from him. I just want to remind you that that is okay. Um, God still loves you, and he will always love you no matter what. Um, and over time, he will continue to show you this and bring you back to him. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron Hardy. I'm graduating with a degree in psychology. I'm the weirdo here. Uh, yes. Thank you. First, I want to thank Robert Wyand. I'm actually parked in that spot at the CCF right now. <laughs> it's a great spot. Uh, the, the biggest word of wisdom I have for everyone is seek help if you need it and don't feel afraid to do so. I know when I first started college, I was ashamed in a way of seeking help. And I always had the mindset of, you know, I'm supposed to be smart, I'm at this school, I'll figure it out. You don't have to do it all on your own. You know, you have campus ministers who are willing to help you all the time. You have your friends around you, your roommates, counselors at the school, or wherever you may find one. Is it fixed now? Sweet. So if you need help, don't be afraid to seek it out. It will help in so many ways. I'm Calvin, and I'm Dan McConnell. And, and we're the men's house RAs, and we just want to say, don't do it. Don't. <laughs> Nicholas can be a very violent man. <laughs> um, and, and we've learned a lot of lessons. Um, one of those being, don't be afraid to step into a leadership role that you feel unqualified to be in. Who knows, you might be a little bit more qualified than you thought, <laughs> and uh, God might do some work in you to uh, make you better. Also learned that uh, Nick's a short guy, but man, he packs a real punch sometimes. <laughs> uh, but uh, also he's a really wise guy. So uh, utilize the ministers of the house and CCF and that kind of thing. Go to them, talk to them. They're there for you guys and it's worthwhile. As regards to uh, future plans, uh, I will be picking up a full-time job as uh, Nicholas's uh, child's godfather. Um, I, I very much look forward to that, so I'll be, I'll be hanging around. And uh, my current plans are um, Nick's making me homeless in two weeks, but I have a copy of the master key, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so good luck, Nick. <laughs> uh, hi, 
I'm Parker Zeely. Um, I guess for my plans, I'm kind of just still looking, kind of just wherever God will send me is where I'm going to go. Um, my words of wisdom is kind of words that have been already been said a little bit is don't be afraid to get involved. I know that you kind of question it when you see an opportunity, you kind of wonder if you're the right one for the job. Um, I know for club sports council, I had it, that voice in the back of my head and it was probably the third email that I finally decided to go for it. And I went for the vice president position and about a month later, the president decided that he was gonna be too busy, LSAT studying and everything like that. And I became president of the council and I was told after the whole year that I did an amazing job and it was just one of those things that God kind of put me in that role. So don't be afraid to get involved because it might be actually a great character development for you and a great way to learn who you are. Hi, I'm Danielle Hopper. Uh, when I graduate, I'll be going to Kansas City to work at a glass plant, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I guess my advice, um, campus has a lot of really cool clubs and organizations outside of CCF. Join something new you've never tried before. You might like it, maybe you don't, but you'll try something new and you'll meet a lot of really cool people outside of CCF too. And then you can invite them to stuff. And then you're always gonna be busy. You're busy in college, you'll be busy after college. Don't be too busy for God. Hello everybody, my name is Grant Miller and I'm gonna go work as a design engineer at Garmin with, with that guy Hayden, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm very thankful for this ministry. Uh, there's three things that have really helped me um, through the ministry that's given me an opportunity to step out, get uncomfortable and really grow spiritually. Uh, leading small groups has been incredible, especially learning to study scripture in a way that you can teach it. Uh, the discipleship program is something that I, I never really felt ready for, but being able to just help other people spiritually mature is something that you can do, you should do. And then uh, being a room leader and being able to invest in uh, younger guys' lives and learn how to deal with conflict is a skill that I'm very thankful for. So really thankful for the ministry and the ministers, and I really feel like I'm ready to be an active member of a, a church now as I work full time. So thank you. everybody. My name is Hayden Dixon. I will be moving to Olathe, Kansas City to also work as Garmin on the autopilot for the helicopters, and I will be living with that guy, Grant. Um, I, I want to take a quick note to thank all of the graduates today. I'm sure every one of us here remembers all the grad banquets we went to, where pretty much everyone would come up here and say, hey, as was mentioned earlier, you either need to focus on school because I was too social, or you need to be social because I focus too much on school. And I was gonna try to wrap that all together in the expectation that that's what we were gonna do again. But the seniors today have really brought you guys a lot of good advice. Um, but I do wanna focus on that aspect just so you guys can kind of see what too much focus on a certain area could be. Um, as my friends know and could tell you, uh, I was a workaholic all the way up until this semester and it is probably one of the most detrimental choices I have ever made in my life. Um, every single opportunity that I had while at this university to take a new position, whether it be with the school, whether it was at the company I was working for, or a new company that had a better job for me, I always said yes. And um, it was extremely detrimental to my spiritual life, to uh, my interactions with this amazing organization, and even my relationship with my friends. And it's really tough because you get to this spot where I'd finally gotten to the point where I was like, oh, like, I'm okay now. Like, I, I've done everything that I wanted to get. And this verse hit me harder than it ever had before reading it in Ecclesiastes 2, uh, verse 11. It says, then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil that I had exp expended in doing it. And behold, all was vanity and a striving after wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun. And just like Ecclesiastes is, yeah, it's pretty morbid. It's kind of bleak. Um, if you read all of Ecclesiastes, he says pretty much everything in life is, is meaningless in that kind of way. Um, but he does provide some hope in that. And I'm going to try to do the same here and not just be like, hey, guys, uh, if you only focus on school and your resume, like life's going to be bad because it's not entirely true. 
Uh, my mindset was not in the right place during a lot of these pursuits that I was in. Um, my intentions were, hey, uh, my father always tried to provide for a family and he did that part well, but I wanna do that better, so I wanna be a provider for my family. How do I do that? I have to work hard, I have to get a good job, I have to make sure my family's never in need. So my intentions were right, but the path that I went on to get there was the worst possible way that I could get there. And so, and, in, and the, to encourage you guys, um, in terms of how do I go through college, how do I live, how do I make sure that I'm not going to get to my s final semester and look back and be like, wow, I'm filled with a lot of regret right now at all the things I didn't do. And the only thing that I would recommend, uh, no matter what you're doing, is make sure that you are not allowing the temporary things of today to affect your mindset negatively on what's eternal. Um, essentially, less big words is just make sure that you're focusing on Christ and on all the things that he can do. Because no matter what you're doing in your life, if you have him as your center, you will find ways to work for the kingdom, whether you are a workaholic ac academic student or if you're a social butterfly, with Christ at the center, you'll find ways to work for the kingdom and not for yourself no matter what you're doing. So pursue that and that's what I would encourage you guys to do. Hey guys, uh, my name is Will Benhart. I'm an engineering management major and I'm gonna be staying in Rolla for the foreseeable future with my beautiful wife Alyssa and our little son Finn um, while we figure out what the next stage of life means for us. Um, when I th was thinking about what I wanted to share as far as wisdom with you guys, I was thinking that I was gonna give some academic advice and then I, um, I calculated my GPA. Um, <laughs> and I figured you guys don't want that. So um, so instead, the advice I have for you is spiritual, uh, but in the spirit of my decidedly lackluster academic performance, um, instead of coming up with my own words, I'm gonna copy the hard work of someone else, um, namely Tim Keller from his book, Prayer. Um, in, in the book prayer, he says to imagine that your boat, that your boat, that your soul is a boat, okay? It's a metaphor, bear with me. So he, he wants to ask about what your soul boat is doing, okay? Tracking, here we go. Are you, are you sailing? If I'm sailing, I'm living the Christian life with the wind at my back. God is real to my heart. I feel his love frequently and see prayers being answered. I see remarkable things when I read scripture and sense that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Are you rowing? If I'm rowing, I'm finding prayer and Bible reading to be more of a chore and a duty than a delight. There are many times that God feels distant. I don't see many prayers being answered and I may even be struggling with doubts about God and myself. However, in spite of these spiritually dry feelings, I don't give up. I don't give in to the temptation to think that I know, I know better than God about how my life should go. I keep reading and praying, attending worship, and reaching out to serve others. Are you drifting? If I'm drifting, I'm experiencing all the conditions of rowing, but instead of actually doing the work of rowing, I'm letting myself drift along. I don't feel like approaching God, much less obeying him, so I don't pray or read. I give in to self-centeredness and I drift into self-indulgent behaviors. Or are you sinking? If I'm sinking, eventually my soul boat will drift away from the shipping lanes and truly lose any forward momentum in the Christian life. Numbness of heart will set in and turn into hardness. The wrong kind of hardship or crisis in life could even lead to total abandonment of faith. So something that's really important to catch here is that there are things in life that we can't control. We can't make the wind blow. There are so many things that happen in our life, the circumstances we're in, our emotions that we don't have control over, and that's okay. We're not always gonna be sailing, the Bible tells us that, and that's all right. But what we can always be doing is rowing, praying, reading our Bible, putting the work in even when we don't want to, especially when we don't want to. That's when it's the most important. Because if we are rowing in the times when we don't feel like it, when the wind catches back up, we're gonna be heading in the right direction more than we ever were before. So that's the words of advice I have for you, that praying is rowing, and we need to be rowing always. Thank you.
We do a similar thing at the men's house, at our last house meeting. We have the seniors stand up and give some words of wisdom. And I made the comment that uh, this was, that was some of the best words of wisdom that we've ever had at a house meeting. And uh, I didn't think that I'd be saying that again, but uh, I really got to say, uh, these are some of the best words of wisdom that we've had at Grad Banquet since I've been here. And I think that's just a small testament to the group that you guys are uh, as graduates. And so let, let's give it up for w all of our graduates one more time. <laughs> Uh, that's all of you except for Robert and Aaron. I literally dialed 911 on you while you were speaking. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's a great group of you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, where, where are the graduates at? I just, I like it better when we all stand up here, but there's too many of you. This is the biggest December group ever. Uh, we're super proud of you guys. Um, and, and there's so many of you, and that makes the speeches longer and the videos longer. So I'll try to be quicker than I normally am, which probably means I'll still be long. But. Uh, you know, we're super proud of you guys. As a staff, we love this event. This is really one of our favorite events that we get to do because we do get to look back on uh, you guys and the first time that we met you guys when you were scared little baby freshmen and uh, whether it was the first time you decided to pop your head into Catalyst or the first, you know, retreat that you went on or, uh, you know, a campus tour or whatever it was. And, and then now, you know, from the outside perspective, we see you guys coming up here, um, not as little baby freshmen, not knowing what you're doing, doing in world, but uh, as, as uh, men and women of integrity, uh, men and women that are ready to not only go and be leaders in the workplace, but uh, to go and be leaders in your churches and in your communities and in your families and in every aspect that God has, uh, has in store for you. And so uh, we're really happy for you guys. You did it. Congratulations. Uh, we're <laughs> so excited to, to see where you guys go, you know, as everybody is, right? Uh, and there's, there's definitely times uh, in our lives to, to, uh, to not sit back and enjoy, right? I mean, we, we got all the ends of the spectrums in the, in, the, uh, in the senior speeches. There's times to say, you know what, it's not good enough. We're gonna keep pushing forward. We're gonna, we're gonna power through. You know, we're not done yet. It's time to be on that grind. You know, the craving of a lion. There's times for that attitude, right? But then there's also times for us to sit back and to enjoy and to say, yes, let's celebrate. Let's, let's take a moment to see what we've accomplished. And guys, this is a really big accomplishment. You all know better than I do, this is a tough school. You know, this isn't a school that's just cranking anybody out. It's cranking out some really good engineering students and Aaron um, <laughs> and a couple others. <laughs> He'll forgive me, he's a psychology major. He can power through it, you know, in his own mind. Uh, <laughs> But this is a tough school, guys. You know, you, 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 this is something to be proud of, okay? We as a staff, this is why we you know, put this together, the officer team, everybody comes together to, to put this together for you guys. We really want to celebrate you guys. We love you guys, and we're super proud of you. Um, as, as evidenced by this group here, you guys have a big community that loves you and supports you and cares for you. And you know, not all of you are lucky enough to be rooming with each other as you go into full-time work, but, uh, but there is still a community here and elsewhere that loves you and supports you. And, uh, and so don't forget about that. Uh, as we kind of end, it's, it's become kind of a tradition for me to give you guys a, a charge. And so I wanna charge you with three things. Uh, a charge is, is, is not a command, it, it's not an encouragement, it's, it's a, uh, it's a challenge, and I, and I want to challenge you guys to do three things, to have three things on your heart as you, you move forward from here. Um, a lot of the, the, the wisdom that I want to share with you guys is kind of the same each year with graduate, graduation banquet, but I also like to kind of tailor it to you guys because every year, every semester, you guys are a new individual group of students, and, uh, and, and and I know all of you in different ways each semester. Uh, and that's what makes it so hard in this job because you guys are awesome and you get here for four years and, and then you just leave us. Um, and, and we really do miss you guys. But, but with that, I, I wanna just challenge you to do uh, three things. So the first one is I wanna challenge you guys to look back as you look forward. A uh, time of celebration, a graduation, uh, is a time where we, we do, we look back, but we're also looking towards the future. You, you all have plans or you're, you're hoping God reveals plans to you. And, and there's this theme throughout scripture that is, is all throughout, maybe not stated explicitly, but it's all throughout scripture in that when, when people come up to hard times, there is, uh, God is always reminding them how he's been faithful to them. 
He's always reminding them what he's done for them in the past as they come upon these challenges in the future. In the Old Testament, what that looks like is, is God saying, look, look at what I did for your forefathers. Look at how I brought you out of slavery in Egypt. Look at how I provided for you in the desert out of nothing. And I sustained you and I gave you life and I, I brought you a family and a home and a promised land, right? And so that's what God said in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, it, it, it kind of changes. And, and, and Paul says, look at what God has done in his grand story of redemption that he's weaved through history to bring you Jesus to bring you his death on the cross, to bring you his, his burial in the grave, and three days later to resurrect and ascend into heaven and to give us the promise that we will have that too. That's powerful stuff. And so when you guys come up to times where you remember, times where you look to the future, hard times in your life, look back to the ways that God has been faithful to those in the past in the Bible, and also look back to the ways that God has been faithful to you in your life specifically, and let that give you the faith and empower you and, and, and renew your trust and your hope in Christ and in his plan for your life. The second thing that I really want to encourage you guys to do is to build community. A lot of you guys have heard me talk about this before, and I say build community instead of find community or get community or, or have community because you know, the fact is a lot of you have, have been through awesome youth groups. You've, you've been in CCF or you've been in awesome clubs on campus or you know, you've jumped into a church that's like really ready to accept you as a college student or whatever it is. And, and, and all that to say, you know, you know, a lot of things have been curated for you and, and designed for you to jump in and grow and learn spiritually and, and make connections with people. And, and that's awesome. There's no knock against that, right? Um, that's literally part of what I spend my life doing, right? But the fact is, a lot of you will go out and, and you're going to look for community and, and you're going to struggle. Um, some of you have, have already experienced that, maybe a co-op or whatever. But some of you will, will find great communities, and we really pray that that is the case for all of you. But a lot of you will struggle in finding community. It takes time. It, it, it is not something that just, just happens. Uh, psychologists say that it takes 300 hours with somebody, intentional hours, to have a real intimate connection with them as a, as a friend. Right. And so in college, that happens in the first two months. Easy. Right. You live with people, you 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 uh, eat with them, you go to class with them. It's easy. It's done. You have your best friends for life in adult life. It just takes a little bit longer. And so I want to encourage you guys not to not to give up, not to give up because you went to church and nobody asked you to ask you to lunch or not to give up because you tried here and there was some rede rejection or whatever, because community is important. And ultimately, we cannot fulfill our role in the body of Christ without the body of Christ around us. Many of you talked about mental health. Many of you talked about community. I think as seniors, you guys understand the importance of this. But the fact is, you know, those, those things that help us in the bad times, that is community. When we cry out to God in the bad times and the hard times and when we're struggling with different things and we say, God, why don't you part the Red Sea for us? And we deny you know, the body of Christ, whom God is helping us and trying to help us through all the time. Because every single one of us here has the Holy Spirit inside of us. And so when your brother or sister in Christ is helping you, that's God helping you. That's God helping you through them by his work in the Holy Spirit. And so don't give up. Don't, uh, don't uh, let it, let it uh, just because you have some rejections, don't, don't let that uh, deter you from Finding and building community. It takes a couple years. It, it can be tough. And then the last thing that I want to wrap up with, the last thing that I want to charge you guys with is to accept your, the mission that God has given you. Accept the mission that God has given you. Uh, we have a, a mindset in, in, in the church in America uh, where there's this total separation between like a pastor and people who work a normal job or a secular job, right? We have all, all these names for it, um, whatever, right? But the fact is, God has called every single one of you and me, regardless of vocation, to evangelize, to live a life pleasing to him, to share the hope that we have in the gospel that is eternal life, the hope that we have in Jesus. It just looks a little bit different, okay? And so I want to challenge you guys to reformulate the way that you view your mission. Your mission, your evangelism, your living as Christ would like you to live isn't just in church and then your job is over here, okay? Your mission, your evangelism, your living as Christ would like you to be, your process of sanctification, your becoming more like Christ is your job, is the profession that God is leading you into, okay? God has called you there. 
many of you can look and see at this time, right? And you can think of all the ways that God has guided you up to this moment the ways that God has provided for you and brought you <laughs> here and there. And, and some of you are still trying to figure out what that is, but I can promise you I've seen a, a lot of you in the place that you're at right now where you're like, I don't know what's next, but God is bringing something awesome for you and he's guiding you and directing you. And this is just part of that process. But the fact is God has brought you to this such and such engineering firm. God has brought you to this place or that place, and it doesn't have to be a church for God to have a very real mission that he wants you to accomplish, which is to share the light of the gospel, which is to share the reason for the hope that you have. And so I wanna challenge you guys as you go out to accept the mission that God has given you, to accept the place that God is taking you to and to not have this weird separation between church and the rest of our lives and to know that God's ability to make us more like him and that God's ability to use us comes in every single aspect of what we do and where God has brought us. And so guys, I wanna just end with the fact that we really love you as a staff. Um, I can say that for all of us. There might be a few of you that were just like, I finally get out of here, but we do really love you guys. And, and when I look at you as a group, there aren't any exceptions. You guys are an awesome, awesome group. And we do really know and have faith and trust that God's gonna use you as leaders in his kingdom. And we're really, really excited about that. And so we love you, don't forget about us. And uh, with, uh, with that, I'd like to invite Joe Lee up uh, to, to uh, get us into our next uh, section of the night and our last section of the night. So thank you guys and we love you graduates. Thank you.